All right, folks, we've got a fun little video today for all you trad shooters out there. I'm gonna give you the secret to beating any compound shooter out there. So stick around. So that's a pretty big claim, talking about beating a compound shooter with a stick bow, but not only beating them once, but beating them every single time. Now there's a couple of tricks that you're gonna have to employ here. We're gonna talk about some of the shooting things here in just a little bit. But the first thing you have to do, and this is critical, you have to get them so fired up that they agree to a shooting contest before they know what the rules are. And there's only one rule, and that's that you get to pick the shots. So what kind of shots can you pick where you can beat a compound shooter with a stick bow? Now, it's obvious that most stick bow shooters out there, even top level shooters, just aren't going to be able to keep pace with a compound shooter shot for shot, you know, at a given distance. It's, you, it's just impossible to meet and to match that precision of a good compound shooter. But there are at least two shots that I know of that a compound shooter just can't make. And that's shooting over something and shooting under something. Now, of course, all this is for fun, so nobody get their panties in a wad. And uh, one other thing that I wanna mention, because I know it's gonna come up in the YouTube comments if I don't mention it now, this, again, is for fun. I'm gonna be shooting at a target that I can't see. I'm not gonna do that in a hunting situation, and I'm not gonna, I'm gonna make another shot down here where I'm shooting under something. And again, this is, this is not practice for hunting. This is just out here in the backyard having fun. And if you've got some compound buddies, you can rile them up, get them fired up, and then go and spank them with these two shots. All right, guys, so this camera is set up right at the same level as my eyes. And so when I drop my head down, I can't see, I basically can see the same thing the camera can see, uh, which is not a whole lot of that target. I can't see the part of the target that I want to hit. I can basically just see the top of that deer's back. And so when I'm setting up this shot and deciding on where to aim i'm kind of just having to mentally i don't know what that is, that bird is if anybody knows what that bird is please tell me i've been trying to figure that out anyway um i'm having to mentally project where i think uh i'm gonna have to aim to hit that thing because i can't see it and i'm relying on the trajectory or the arc of that arrow to clear that hay bale and then drop in on the back side of it right into uh, where I want it to go. Not too bad for not looking at what I was shooting at. A little bit far forward, but. So that is where I wanted it to go. I was a little bit off, but not too bad. All right, so I've got the camera set up at a slightly different angle, just to the side now. I'm gonna be in the same place. So now you should be able to follow that arc all the way over the top of that, uh, that hay bale. I still can't see the target, but the camera should be able to. All right, so for the next shot, we're gonna have to rearrange our hay bales here.
All right, so there's a couple of details I wanna share here. Um, the first shot where I'm shooting over the top of that hay bale, the reason that you're able to make that with a stick bow and a compound is just not gonna be able to do it is because of the trajectory. Uh, with these sh stick bows, we're shooting slower speeds. A lot of times we're shooting heavier arrows. And so your trajectory is just much greater. That arc is much greater. So you're able to clear over the top of that thing. Um, doing that with a compound, you're just gonna shoot the bale of hay. You can't, you know, at this distance anyway, we're only shooting at 22 yards. At this distance, you don't have enough of an arc to clear over the top of this bale and get into the target. Uh, the second shot, they might actually be able to make that with a compound if they have the right kind of rest, like a whisker biscuit or some kind of rest that holds the arrow in place uh, and doesn't allow it to fall off the rest. Um, I haven't shot a compound for over 20 years, so I'm not real familiar with the new types of rests they have. But when I was shooting compounds um, back in the 90s, all the rests were just these two prong things. And if you tilt your bow too far one way or the other, your arrow's just gonna fall off. So uh, makes it kind of difficult to make an under, the, um, under a branch or under a bale shot like that. So on a side note, I recently put a short video up on Instagram uh, where I was out here in the woods behind my house shooting at some 3D targets and somebody decided that that was offensive. And so they flagged it as sensitive content. So now it's got one of those little grayed out you know, boxes on there. So, you know, we, we want to protect everyone from shooting at animal effigies now, apparently. So um, if you're not following on Instagram, you should go over there and check that out. It's 